Thank you so much for listening to our Big Time Talker podcast. I'm Burke Allen. New episodes every Tuesday are uploaded on all your favorite podcast platforms, uh, including iHeartMedia and Apple and Spotify. We're everywhere. If you hear that noise in the background, that's because we're surrounded by thousands of the biggest and best authors and publishers. The entire book industry is here with me this weekend at the American Library Association's annual conference and exhibition in the Cormac Place in beautiful Chicago, Illinois. And joining us in the Glass Enclosed Nerve Center, our podcast pavilion in the studio, is author Elliot Esparza. His book is called My Mind Is Not Yours. Elliot, thanks for stopping by the studio. Well, thank you for having me. Congratulations on the book. Um, lots of people listening may not have read it yet. It's available in bookstores everywhere, and you can get it online as well. If somebody says, hey, you're an author, Elliot, what is this book about? How do you answer? What's the elevator pitch? Uh, let's see. Uh, well, I'm a little nervous, but I am obsessed with this book. I just can't stop thinking about it. Uh, seriously, whenever I pick it up to reread a section... I just end up rereading the entire book. See, uh, I love that. I love you like it because lots of authors, by the time they get through their book, I, I know they've had enough, right? Exactly. But I think I wrote this thing to fit my specifications to just entrance me. And, and I know uh, this book is for uh, young adults, and okay. uh, I am, I wrote it so that uh, it keeps the attention span of today's audience. Uh, and I guess using that method, it fit right in at home in my head. Uh, but My Mind Is Not Yours is a supernatural detective urban fantasy thriller. You got a lot happening there. <laughs> uh, I recently won the Next Generation Indie Book Awards. I um, saw that, and by the way, the indie book folks are the ones who made the, the, oh, yes. bro- the broadcast Can't thank them enough. possible, and, and you, you lift the stickers right there on the cover. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, thank you. Um, the book is about a young girl named Florian Lily Cobblestone, and she has the ability to see everyone's spirit animal. And we follow her as she searches for her own spirit animal, i.e. her purpose, her confidence, her life's goal. Meanwhile, you have Mayor William Wright Banquet, uh, the conquistador of politics, and the third mayor of Territory City, the most progressive city in the world. Okay. And uh, Territory, uh, uh, this mayor is getting hunted down by ghosts, supernatural side. And... In this book, there are detectives, bounty hunters, spies, cute animals, scary monsters, uh, strong characters with disabilities, uh, therapy, hypnotism, and uh, criminal masterminds, criminal escapades, and uh, you don't want to miss anything. This is the first book. You had a lot happening. First, is this the first book you ever wrote? For my first book I ever wrote, and the first book in a new eccentric detective series. So, <laughs> out of the gate, out of the shoot, you're an Indie Book Award winner. Does that validate the fact that, that you really you know what you're doing? You got it right for your first book. <laughs> I'm glad all this hard work paid off. I was I did the illustrations. I wrote the book all on my own. I self-published through Ingram Sparks and Amazon. And at first, uh, when I first released it this year, it was dead silent. I I was worried, but as soon as I got the news that I um, placed as a finalist in right. this award, it, it relieved. Oh, whole weight off my shoulders. I was so proud, and I can't thank the Indie Book Awards enough. Where did the, the uh, inspiration for this style of book come from? Uh, let's see. Uh, characters throughout fiction, all right. throughout fiction, uh, like Sherlock Holmes, Moriarty, Lupin, um, and many different types of movies. I love analyzing thought-provoking stories. I can't get enough of just breaking down why they make my heart race. Um, and across all media too. Video games like The Last of Us, Red Dead Redemption 2, TV shows like The Legend of Galactic Heroes, and they all stem back to this thing that I found that I love in real life, helping people. Uh, I work at the Shepherd Center of Greater Winston-Salem. We help seniors with uh, transportation to their doctor's appointments, recreation activities, minor home repair, stuff like that. And right. I used to work at uh, Habitat for Humanity, a bunch of nonprofit organizations in Winston-Salem. and. I just want to show through fiction that, and in, in this day and age with our young adult readers, that helping others um, does make the world a better place. You, um, 
you probably are kind of a big deal now back at the Shepherd Center. Do they know <laughs> that a guy that works there is an award-winning author, or do you keep that on the DL? <laughs> I told them, and they're all proud of me. <laughs> I bet they are, and you should be very proud, too. Uh, so this book, My Mind Is Not Yours, what does the title mean? The title stands for Self-Confidence. There are so many characters here, and they all can say the words, My Mind Is Not Yours. Uh, like how every spirit animal is unique, every character makes a splash on the page. And each citizen of Territory City is assigned to a tarot card. So try guessing which character is which card uh, as you read. And that's right, it's, the city is pronounced Territory City. As in tarot, like the card, right. but, but it's written as tarot, like the card. And Tory, as in architectural and infrastructure terms. Pretty <laughs> interesting. Would, uh, you, you threw a lot of genres of, of uh, books out there, mm -hmm. um, but I guess, would you boil it all down to an urban fantasy? Is that what you would call it? Yes. Uh, there's a lot of different stories happening at the same time, but it all correlates to the same themes, and the main character, Florian Lily Cobblestone, is just growing as well, along with the reader as she learns her abilities. I think it's interesting that you're a guy and you have a female protagonist. Was it hard for you to write in that female point of view? Um... I do have other male characters. It's a there's you could say it has multiple uh, main characters. Right. Uh, I like getting inside a, uh, because you know with, with apologies to Lily, mm -hmm. our intern is in the studio now. There is some truth to the fact that women are slightly different than men. Well, that's true. I won't deny that. <laughs> but uh, so was it tough to get inside uh, that character and, and make her uniquely feminine? Well, I wouldn't say she's entirely feminine. I would say that she's maybe more asexual she's more concentrated on finding that purpose in life okay. finding herself and um, exploring this weird situation she's in <laughs> and it is a weird situation I was looking at the cover art and the, the book looks fantastic it's hardcover by the way and and uh, Ellie did the illustrations in the cover and, and it really pops out almost like a uh, anime uh, oh yes heavily inspired by anime <laughs> just amazing well good for you this is look it's a big deal that you wrote this book. It's your first book, and out of the shoot, it's an award winner. Oh, yes. So congratulations. Yes, on thank that. you. If there are listeners to the podcast right now, mm -hmm. the Big Time Talker, who say to themselves, I'd love to write a book. Yes. I've got an idea for a book. It doesn't matter the genre, but I've got an idea for a book. What would you tell them? Do you have any advice as a first-time author who obviously mm -hmm. did it right, and you're an award mm -hmm. winner? Let's see. For people that are just starting out, Right. I would recommend get all your ideas on a page. Write, write, write. Don't stop. Later you can worry about piecing it together, making it flow, and last, you don't want to worry about if it flows or if it's entertaining just yet. Just make sure you have all your ideas, even if you're just throwing them in a hat, get them piled up. So then you have some resources to go back on, uh, notes you can just double check, and just piece them together in the most entertaining possible uh, way possible later. But as long as you have those ideas, that safety net will never let you down. What's your process for writing? Are you uh, one of those guys that waits for the inspiration to hit? Do you sit down at your computer and go, I'm going to sit here until I write 2,000 words, or I'm going to sit here for an hour, and I don't care if I write no words, but I'm not getting up? How do you do it? How did you get from nothing except an idea to this finished book that I'm holding in my hand right now? Let's see. I would say I wait for the inspiration to hit, or I go back to watch my favorite movies that really just make my heart race, TV shows that just, that pinnacle moment that makes you cry, makes you just, makes the adrenaline just starts pumping, that always re-sparks my uh, inspiration and my imagination. And it's just amazing uh, what media we have nowadays and how much is coming from even different countries just pouring in and with the internet er era. You have basically an infinite amount of uh, different shows that, and different genres you can pick from and just enjoy to your heart's content. You picked a challenging genre. You talk about all right. the different media options that are out there. And young people, especially young guys mm -hmm. you know, who are, are gamers, may not instinctively go, Oh, I'd like to spend my Saturday afternoon reading a book. That's what I want to <laughs> do. Was that ever a thought in your mind when you sat down to write this thing? How am I going to get young people, young adults to read? Well, uh, the and cover... And compete yeah. with movies and, and compete, compete with games, games, you know? Yeah, uh, I made the cover more uh, 
akin to anime, so that it might uh, draw, draw people, people in. in. Yeah, yeah. And I have a website that has merch, that has the anime designs and stuff like that. Oh, smart. And, what is your website? Oh, uh, Elliot D. Esparza. So it's E-L-I-O-T. So it's one L, one T. The letter D, E-S-P-A-R-Z-A. Dot com? Dot com. <laughs> Very good. So... So you, you put all that into the, the mix, and you mentioned when you were looking for inspiration for the book, some classics, like you mentioned, uh, you know, the, the Sherlock Holmes books Sherlock way Holmes. back in the day. What did you read as a kid coming up? Uh, the Lord of the Rings books, Harry Potter books, those, I ate them up like a sponge. Um, yeah. And, um, those are the kinds of books that inspire young people exactly. to read and to write. Yes. They usually have the movie to accommodate them, and then uh, if you want more, you can always dive into those books. And it's amazing. <laughs> do you uh, share the opinion that lots of folks do that the book is almost always better than the movie? Yes, I have to say. Usually, the original author's intent is in that book. They put a lot of time and work on it. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's usually the book is uh, so much better. Well, you know, it's tough to do all that character development True, and, yes. and do sort of the deep dive you can as an author mm. when you've got the time constraints of a movie or uh, a limited That's edition television show. Now, having said that, it's also many authors' dream, especially folks like you that write fiction books, mm. to go, man, I would love to see this on Hulu. Man, I would love to see this in the theater. Yeah. I practically, mind, are you yeah. that guy? I practically wrote this book to be a TV series or a movie or a franchise of some kind. So, it, it, yeah. Have you um, gone as far in your head as to cast any of the characters? Like, this <laughs> actor would be a great Florian. This actress would be uh, a great whatever. Mm. Like, who would you have play your lead character if you could? You know, wave that magic <laughs> Elliot one and say, this is who I want to play the lead. Who is your Florian? I don't know yet. I'll have to do casting auditions and stuff like that. It, I haven't really thought that far into it, but I'm definitely uh, w open to the idea. Open to the idea, and with the spirit animals to accommodate the actors with maybe puppetry or CG, right. uh, a mixture of the two or something. Uh, I'm sure that it would increase the acting chops of these actors, especially if they can have a little bit of say on what they want their spirit animals to do in the certain situations they're in. Um, so I can explain like how these spirit animals work. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, Florian can see these souls, and she has the ability to, with this ability, she can uncover secrets, she can find culprits, decode lies, defend herself from others, and through analyzing the movements of these spirit animals, she can predict what the owner will do before they will actually do it. And uh, uh, these spirit animals are manifestations of the owner's life, their true self, okay. and uh, they take for they, they may take demonic forms if they're really evil, or cute and cuddly forms of, like animals if they're kind-hearted and through experience people and their souls do change so throughout uh, each character's arc uh, you can see these you can literally see them uh, through the descriptions uh, that they heal through therapy or if they go down a bat wrong path they'll mutate a little bit into more of scary form. go down the dark side <laughs> yeah dark side light side classic star wars <laughs> i love it and this is the first book in the series correct in your mind's eye do you see this as a trilogy do you see it going farther than that probably farther than that uh i really want to probably make it the next uh shooting high here or the next agatha christie series the next uh, sherlock holmes series i have a uh, high hopes for this one jk rowling Watch your back. I know you're probably listening right now. We got a comer here, Elliot Esparza. The book is My Mind Is Not Yours. Welcome to Territory City, urban fantasy at its best. The cover art is amazing, too. This is the first book in the series. And, yes, it has a gold finalist sticker on the front from the Indie Book Awards right out of the box. Congratulations, Elliot. Yes, thank you for having me. Thanks for being on the program today. We are broadcasting from the American Library Association's annual conference and exhibition right here on the floor in Chicago, Illinois, with all the great authors, and we sure do appreciate you downloading and listening to our Big Time Talker podcast. Fresh episodes post every Tuesday. Thank you to our show sponsor, SpeakerMatch.com. Thanks to the folks from the Next Generation Indie Book Awards for sponsoring our broadcast pavilion here at ALA. Elliot, I wish you much success. Thank you.
Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for listening. Now, go out and make it a great day. Bye, everybody. Bye. Well done. All right.